Psalms 119, verses 89 to 96. Lamed. Eternal Word. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And Jesus spoke that the word will outlast the heavens and the earth. But the world, the word will forever will be. The word was before everything. The word is here in our laps today. And the words is eternal. Just as the Lord Jesus Christ is. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. The faithfulness of what? The word. And goes in generations to generations to generations. Thou has established the earth and it abided. God created the earth and here it is. One day God will, will rule out this earth. This earth will stand before God and it will flee God. The earth that all the shame that's been on this earth. And it's not how God created it. We're going to get a new earth. And the, the earth was created by the word. God spoke it into existence. They continue this day according to thy ordinances. God set the direction of the sun and God set the direction of the moon. God set the direction of all the planets. The sun will rise in the east and it will set in the west and it will not ever break there. It will never just one day reverse direction. That's a decree for God and it speaks in, in Genesis 2 I believe. It's for signs, it's for seasons. It has a purpose. For all are thy servants. They serve God. A servant is a verb. A servant isn't a part-time servant. He serves when he just wants to. He serves all the time when he's needed. Unless thy law had been my delight, I should have been per perished. I should have perished in my affliction. As we've been talking about affliction, affliction, affliction. If you don't get in the word and get right and correct it, perish. You're gone. You're thrown out. Refuged. There is a point to make that if you can sin so much that God says that's it. When Paul talks about the Lord's Supper, he says some sleep death. Some are weak. It's not advisable to stay in your sin. It's not advisable to stay in your affliction. I will never forget thy precepts. I guess you can say when we get the glory, there's only one thing we're going to remember is going to be the book. For with them thou hast quickened me, made me alive. I'm alive. Whether I die or I'm alive, I'm going to be raised up. And given a new body. And given new life. Eternal life. Because the word said so. Not what I said. Not what a pastor says. Not what, what a man says. It's what God said. God said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and thou shalt receive eternal life. 
God said it. And that makes it so. I am thine. Save me. So just because you are God's. You are not protected from salvation. And I don't mean eternal salvation. I mean you're not you're not protected from all harms and all problems and all diseases. Peter belonged to Jesus. And he stepped out on that boat in faith. And walked on the water. And began to sink. Now, if anybody will tell you that once you get saved, all your life is going to be wonderful, not according to Peter, not according to the, the life of Paul. That guy lived in a life of pearls. Many times he had to call out in his life to God, save me. For I have sought thy precepts. If your help from the Lord completely demanded upon your faithfulness in the book, would God help you? For I am thine, save me, for I have sought thy precepts. Lord, I'm yours. I'm in your word, save me. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me. You can write your own death sentence. Waiting for you to sin. To catch you. They couldn't do that with Jesus. They couldn't ensnare him, couldn't entangle him. But if you want to take a King David, what would what would you could what could you do to catch him to destroy himself? Just put a nice beautiful woman out there who's someone else's wife. Same thing for Samson, same thing for Solomon. What thing could you put out there to destroy Eve? Just tell her not to Give her something and, and then tell her not to do something with it. you got to be careful with your sins and the things you do in your life. Because your enemies may be using it. And Satan may use it to destroy you. And thus, you would destroy your own self. Because you enjoy something. But I will consider thy testimonies. What is the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ? What is the testimony of God? They are holy and righteous. And you cannot catch them in any sin. Let God be true and every man a liar. That means God never lies. I have seen an end of all perfection. Everything's going to end. Everything you see on this planet, everything you strive for, everything you earn will end. All the people that do everything they're supposed to is going to end. But thy commandment is exceedingly broad. Now compare 96 to 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven, and I have seen the end of perfection. There are only two things that go to heaven that are on this earth 
presently today. Lost souls that, that turn to the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and the Bible. That is it. Nothing else is eternal. Man's soul and the Bible. Even a lost man's soul will live eternally in the lake of fire. It will not end. Every man that is born has a part of him that you've already got eternal life. But God calls etern God's calling of eternal life, his definition is to be with him in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not to be in hell. He turns around and puts that as perish, the gnashing and, and, and the tea, into darkness. Quickening, we've read, as far as the eternal word, to be made alive. All right, we die. But we're not going to go to heaven and, and sitting around in coffins all eternity. We're going to be alive with a mouth, with eyes, with hands. The eternal word shows in verse 90 the faithfulness into all generations. It, it has been going on, it's been going on since man has been created, Genesis. Chapter 2. How many generations has it been from Abraham to, to today? And yet we still have the word. How many people have attacked books and tried to destroy one book over all the books in the world? And yet it still survives. The Bible. They continue this day. It's still living. It's still alive. It's still saving. It's still changing lives. It is still perished. I remember a preacher visited an Asian country. And there was this group of people that came before him in a room. And they dug out a bag. And they opened that bag up and pulled out their Bible. And over so gently put it on the table. And gently opened to where they were going to be. Respecting the word. And loving the word and make sure I don't tear a page. Because this is very precious. It took me love of a Christian to get what I have. Those are places where the Bible has been banned. Lest thy law have been my delight, I should have perished. Even when I go and die, the word will still be here. The Bible speaks about a famine of hearing the word. There's going to be a famine of hearing the word, but the word's still there. Like that king, when they cleaned out the temple, they found the book of the law. It was there. It wasn't lost. They just didn't want to do what God wanted to do. Had they gone to, to the temple like they're supposed to, there was the word waiting for them. When there's a famine of the, of the, of the hearing of the word, the word is there. I will never forget thy precepts. So when you get to glory, you're not going to you're not going to remember your hound dog, you're not going to remember how many fish you caught. You're not going to remember grandma. You're going to remember the word. 
You want to talk about memorization? Think about all eternity you had without a television, without junk. You know, Pastor Roloff's girls would be able to quote entire chapters of the Bible. How? He took all the junk of the world away. And when you devote that time that the world takes to the Lord, what wonderful things you can accomplish. I have seen the end of all perfection. It's going to end. But the word will not. And John 1.1 1, 1 says the word is the Lord Jesus Christ. These modern Bibles take and subtract and and if the word is Jesus Christ and you subtract from him, can you imagine taking Jesus and cutting his nose off? Oh, you I wouldn't do that. Yeah, but what do you do when you cut and remove from the word of God? You're removing Jesus Christ parts. Add. You add something to the Word of God. What do you put? What, what do you put in Jesus' forehead? A little piece of flesh up here in his forehead. Well, I, I wouldn't. That, that'd be yeah, but that's what you do when you add. If you really love the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll love His Word because it is Him. It is eternal and forever. And this is the only thing you're going to take to heaven with you besides any souls. And some Christians, sorry to say, will not have any souls but their own and will not have any of the word taken with them into glory. Because they don't read it. They don't study it. They don't have anything to do with it. I've been in churches where the church provides a pew Bible. And that's the only Bible that person has. And when they come, they, they grab that pew Bible. And that's the only one they have. They only have one at home. That's a shame. And it's a shame that you don't read the Word, and you don't study the Word, and you don't get into the Word. Because you're not going to really like heaven. Because it's all about the Word. That's what eternity is going to be about, the Word. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, 
I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee how great the Lord, how great the Lord. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow.